Welcome to GBIRL, the podcast looking at the real business world of esports, gaming, and streaming with the people and personalities behind it all. Here is your host, Bill the Conqueror. All right, everybody, welcome back to the podcast. And there are tons of apps over, out there that I've seen, that I've used, and I have found a new one for streaming that helps me to celebrate those who choose to send their communities to me, to choose to hang out in mine, and I'm involved in the beta of of Clippy.tv, and I have with me today on the screen, you see him. He is the founder, creator, uh, software guru uh, um, that 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 made 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 Clippy TV. His name is Dom. He's been gracious enough to make time for me all the way from Germany. It's, it's really interesting how the the internet brings us together across thousands and thousands of miles. So, so so if there's a slight sound problem or if there's a delay in the reply from either of us, it's probably because he's like thousands of miles east of me right now. So Dom, thanks for making time for me today, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Man. All right, so 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 obviously, you're a, a software developer, and I've used Clippy TV several times. I love it in my own stream, and you are so so as a software developer, you didn't just like wake up one day and decide, you know, uh, I'm gonna make this awesome thing. You you just like any skill, you you started at a base level and you sort of grew up over time doing it. So 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 to talk about your uh. uh I guess your upbringing, schooling, what, mm-hmm. what you've sort of learned along the way in terms of software development and then sort of get into the whole, whole, whole backstory of, uh, of Clippy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the, the, the really interesting part to start off is, is you call me a software developer, but I'm not. Um, oh, okay. Okay. So by, by by day, I'm an IT engineer. So I've okay. been doing IT eight years now. Um, ever since I left school back at the when I was a young age of eighteen. Um, and so coding has I've I've actually always, funnily enough, been very staunchly against ever doing software development. Um, oh, always said I'd never do it as a job or anything like that. And so. <laughs> Right. To be here now is, um, yeah, that's different. But uh, I've along the way, um, I've always been very much self-taught. Mm-hmm. I like learning, but I'm not academic. Um, so school just always bored the hell out of me. Um, <laughs> and uh, I always found all the things to do. So um, I started fiddling around with computers and stuff when I was like 13, which my mom never appreciated because I could figure out how to take them apart, but couldn't quite figure out how to put them back together again. <laughs> um, so that happened to the family PC a couple of times. Uh, but, oh, you know. okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, so I, I, I'm sure there are some very, 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 I mean, very, I mean, very I'm interesting st- uh, stories there behind behind you being in your room doing something your mom walks in what in the world are you doing now right <laughs> yeah yeah it's definitely the reaction i got a few times it was just like i wanted to see how this bit worked and so i checked and turns out that's how it works so <laughs> uh, so okay so so if you're not a software developer or at least you don't you don't call yourself a software developer. You're mm-hmm. more of an, more of an engineer. Well, what was the process by which you decided? You know, I like Twitch, but it it it, it needs it, it, streamers. Streamers need some more tools. Streamers need to um, have have some better better things at their fingertips to to to, to make their uh, 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 streams streams. Streams of better. <laughs> um. So really, I I never really so like both in my personal life and my day job, um, coding and writing code has always just been another tool on a tool belt to solve a problem I have. Mm-hmm. Um, which is how I've learned it over the past few years, and how I now do have the ability to write code when I need to solve a problem. It's just right. not the thing I do as a day job. Right. Um. And so things like Clippy mainly just came around of a solving a problem I wanted to solve. Um, okay. And so I've built tools in the past that are mostly just little tools for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, 
ways for like mods in my channel to control my scenes mm -hmm. because you know especially with like battle royale games and stuff like that you drop jumping in you forget to change the scene in obs people miss half the action because you die in the first 30 seconds or at least <laughs> right. generally that's my experience anyway um so and it, there's there are part of the challenge for me is there are tools out there existing so like for instance you can use streamlabs chatbot and that can change things for you but i don't use streamlabs i use stream elements so okay. i build it myself um, and Clippy was the first one that was actually, um, it starts off in two stages, really. So there was Clippy in December last year, um, started off as a one trick pony. I saw a tweet from someone who was trying to do a highlight reel for their channel for like November, you know, their top clips. And, and so one of the things I was going to do is just like see what their top clips were, because that's a really good way to see what the best moments of your stream were and unfortunately twitch doesn't give you that ability to do so all their like highlights and stuff are in relative date ranges so it's like the last seven days or the last month for all time there's no way to go show me my top clips in november and i kind of just sat there and it was like it was like 8 a.m in the morning and i was half asleep and i was just like i think i can do that so i just replied to a tweet i was like yeah i reckon i can do that and like two days later, I had this little website mm -hmm. bashed together um, and kind of launched it. <laughs> a few people liked it. A few people used it. Um, and yeah, so and I was like, okay, you know, this is something like, um, see what else I can do. Um, and then the sort of next stage of it, which is where Clippy really came into its own, which is with Clippy shout out. Um, this was early January and I was just, I was actually incredibly hungover <laughs> one morning. Um, I wasn't particularly in the mood to do anything. I was just, I had like a wave of inspiration to like have this clip fly in when you shout someone out. And I'm not the first person to do it. I've, I've seen it in the past. Okay. But every other time I've ever seen it, it's always been quite a minimal implementation. The clip just appears, um, it's there, and then it disappears, right? Um, okay. And I just thought to myself, and I was like, I, mean, I, I bet I could do that better and, you know, hmm. have it just fly in, have a little bit of pizzazz to it, um, okay. rather than just being that thing that's there. And so I cobbled it together just to, like, see how it would look and see if i could actually do it and i did and so i recorded a short little demo video of it um threw it together and threw it up on twitter um and i expected a couple of mates to like it you know i've, I've got a lot of people who have always been phenomenal at supporting me mm -hmm. um, a lot of like friends who are streamers so i was like yeah some of them will probably like it and nothing and i kind of put it up and then my phone just started going ding a lot um wow and it, it completely blew up um wow. and by the end of the day it was like two thousand views wow. um okay. which for me is phenomenal because i have like a hundred people following me on twitter so <laughs> it's not like i've got some big social presence that i was right. using here and um i kind of put you know hey if you want to be part of the beta that i hadn't thought about or actually existed at this point i was like if you want to be part of the beta when it starts dm me and yeah there was just but the, the the crazy part was when people I didn't know started DMing me. Wow. Um, okay. And I was like, yeah, I don't know who you are. And I loved that. Like, <laughs> right. And then obviously the first few people were friends or friends of friends. Right. Yeah, and there were just people that would come up and you're like, pick on their profile, was like not following by anyone you know. And I'm like, oh. So okay. that, was, that was crazy. But the real crazy part is then I didn't actually have anything <laughs> i had this little thing that i literally just cobbled together hung over one morning and now i was like i really wish i'd built more of the product before announcing it so that that, that led into a couple of chaotic weeks i bet okay so just just as an aside uh, i'm looking at the wall behind you and there seem to be several bottles of of uh shall we say um uh, uh, a beverage is behind you. <laughs> Which one of those was your uh, was your was your chosen chosen cause? Um, I, I think hangover. <laughs> I think that night it was a result of spiced rum, which would be spiced. Okay. that one right 
Yeah. Right there. Oh, okay, right now. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> just, I, I, I just want to make that reference now, so that when you get super extra famous, you can get, you can get, 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 get sponsored <laughs> by them, right? <laughs> yeah, Clippy and Captain Morgan's. There we are. Clippy and Captain Morgan's. That was that. That's how. And uh, obvi- obviously, you should totally reach out to them with this story because they'd be like, "Hey, <laughs> the whole reason Clippy exists is Captain Morgan's." You know? Okay, so yeah, so okay, so th- th- that's a really interesting story you have about the whole 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 birth of birth of birth of Clippy, because. It seems like the best ideas aren't really ones that are planned out. They just sort of like show up at the right time and they serve a specific need. And so when you get those those DMs from people that you totally don't even know, you're like, okay, uh, so random person on Twitter, why are you talking to me right now, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not really a man of a plan. 90% of the time, um, which this whole experience has made me realize that sometimes you do actually have to have a plan whether you want it or not. Um, but yeah, no, and it's like that there was uh, so many people who were assuming it was a lot bigger thing than it was. I'm, I'm just some idiot who threw this thing together right. and it works. And I mainly built it for myself. Again, this was kind of one of those tools where I was like, I'm going to build it for other people. Right. So if anyone ever wants to use it, they can. But really, I'm building it for myself. I know I'm the target market for it. And, you know, if a couple of other people pick it up, what the hey, it's not really that much extra work for me. And then, obviously, everyone else felt very different than I did. <laughs> and, um, All right. Had a... So okay, so 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 you have this idea that you're like, I need this thing, and it's this is what I want it to look like, and then it blows up. So 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 on your website, uh, Eclipse TV, I'll make sure to have a uh, a link in the description. So you so basically you have two features for Clip. You have a a uh, 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 a finder feature and a shout out feature. So 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 from what you're talking about for the finder feature, you 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 you, you took the uh, available data that uh, 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 Twitch gives you and like, mm-hmm. and, and so, so instead of organizing clips by by a, a date range, you did it date range and 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 of viewership numbers, right? Yeah, and and other data. So that's that's something weird. So now you can also so you select any date range you want. So you can you know first first the twenty eighth of February, and then you can sort of do sorting and filtering in there. So you can filter by title, or you know it'll it'll pick up all the games that you played during then. Okay. Then you can filter. So you can say you know show me all my escape from Tarkov or those kind of things. So okay, so so it so so it actually turns into turn turns into an interesting a tool for people who play, who stream stream multiple games that instead of having to manually go back and search for okay, I had you know I I, uh, I played Tarkov in the last two weeks I played Tarkov four times so I have to go find th- that you can just. You, you can just go into Clippy and say, "Give me all my all my Tarkov clips, all my Tarkov clips from uh, this day to this day." And that's yeah. And that seems like a a I don't know. It seems like a really silly, simple thing to, that uh, uh, Twitch should probably have, but they don't, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's it, so the so so I mean this often simple fixes life I'm easier for easier for everybody and so 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 you have the finder so do you actually have plans now for some other features or is this or is this or is this kind of kind of a kind of a kind of a see what happens happens thing um there's there's stuff i want to see in it personally um okay. so it's kind of a twofold thing of with, with all the sort of like apps within the app uh we're building um it's kind of just 
a balance between whatever people are asking for um, and, you know, I, I, I kind of have the attitude of if I can do it in a way that doesn't suck, I'll do it, generally. <laughs> um, okay. Because people, people have requested some features and I'm like, technically, I could do that, but it would just, it wouldn't be great. And it would just okay. really make the performance of it really suck or, you know, just mm -hmm. actually the thing you're asking for once you see it in the end, it's just bad. So, um, but I, I'm I'm okay. always open to feedback, and you know this is a tool where everyone else wants to use. Right. So, give the features. You know, there's only so much that I know that I want. Um, so yeah, with things like Finder, um, we want to add more and more features to that over time, and it's kind of one of those sort of iterative processes, and just mm -hmm. go, I'm gonna add this today, and then I'll add it, and it'll go live, and then it's done. And that's kind of the bonus of you know being a incredibly small team of one i can just do that um right you know twitch is bound and that's kind of leads back to why i never wanted to be in software development you know when you're in a software development team i've worked alongside them you know right. there is you know, requirements there's big teams involved right there's back and forth there's meetings you know as agile and fast as you want to be there's right. once an organization grows you slow down so yeah i have the Ability, I'm just going to want to add this feature today and then I'll add it so I can figure out how to do it. Right. Um, so, yeah, like where the features are going to go, um, I've got a big Trello board of ideas that just kind of flashed across my brain at one point or another. And I kind of just go back and if there's someone I'm like, yeah, I think I know how to do that now, I'll just sort of cobble it together and go from there. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I want to go back to what you said earlier about features that people ask for but then you you you, you 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 start off thinking oh i can probably do that but but then when you get into the nuts and bolts of what it would take to pull off a feature like that you realize it doesn't work with what i do and i think that's that's a a a you should call it a threshold where people who are not technical people don't understand what people like yourself who are technical people actually have to do to make something happen. So, so, mm -hmm. so, 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 sort of walk me through a like if somebody, I'm gonna phrase this, walk me through a a, a feature that somebody has said that they wanted, and yep. you. And you looked at it and went, okay, it sounds good on the surface. However, when I get into it, this isn't just, is not possible. Yeah. So I've got a perfect example for that. It's been a really commonly requested feature. So max length of a clip on Twitch is 60 seconds. Okay. That's quite long. Um, so with shout out, um, when you want to shout someone out, especially if you're in game, having a clip playing over your content for 60 seconds might just drag on a little bit. So right. a common request we've had is, can we set a max duration? And on okay. paper, I want to go, yeah, that's a really useful feature. I'd love to put that in. Okay. But then that comes back to this whole philosophy I love of if I can do it in a way that doesn't suck. And unfortunately, okay. um, Twitch doesn't give us all the metadata we want. So a really useful thing for them to pass. when we So we make a request to Twitch, say, show us a clip for this streamer and they send us a whole bunch of info back including like the video url mm -hmm. thumbnail their name the game the view count they don't give us a link um oh, okay so there are other ways we could figure that out we could grab a clip calculate the length automatically once we've mm -hmm. got the clip but then if that doesn't match that minimum duration then we have to go back to twitch ask for another clip right you know when you've got the laws of randomness coming into play, that could be the first clip is fine, or you could go through a hundred clips right. before it finally finds one. And those requests are expensive in time. And we're only talking, say, right. half a second or a second. You add that up 10 times, that's 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Then you add the delay of the stream to the viewer, right. and it can look like sometimes Clippy didn't even work at all. But it's actually just because it's had to take this time to process. And we have that problem with the random setting because it can fetch a lot of clips and then design. So working on improving that. Yeah, that's one of those features where I was just saying, yeah, on paper, really good feature. Right. would absolutely put right. it in. Right. But we're limited by what Twitch gives access to. 
And see, that right there, so the fact that Twitch doesn't give you one tiny piece of information, which would be <laughs> simple to give you, it isn't it isn't like you're you're asking for a massive massive piece of information that several uh 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 doesn't give that to you and for people who aren't technical i mean i'm slightly more technical than the average person mm -hmm. however i'm not like you technical so yeah. so, so so the average person like well why can't i just do this well in order to pull it off i need the information well you know can't you just do this and this is and you get into get into at some point with the attention span of the audience Making mm -hmm. this adjustment to this app becomes comes comes counterproductive, and then while it might work at some point, the lag time between the data transfer points would would, would make it uh, 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 unviable, right? Yeah, and, and um, <laughs> that, that kind of ties back to so like the information that Twitch gives us as well. Mm -hmm. We're also really stuck in that. So we use the Twitch APIs, mm -hmm. which is basically just a way of accessing the information. Um, and APIs very commonly go through version. And about a year or two ago, Twitch released the latest version of their API, mm -hmm. and they're getting ready to shut down the older version. And so we've got a problem. Like the older version gives us that data. It gives the length value. Okay. When you're requesting the clip, but the new version doesn't. And so I have that conflict of I can technically make this feature right now mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't suck. Right. But also, I know that old API, the version five, is going away at basically any point. It could be tomorrow or in a year. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I don't want to build a feature that people right. then become to depend on and then I have to take it down in six months because. Right. It's not physically possible. So one of the things that I've always aimed to do is basically ignore the old APIs, which right. you should do, and only focus on what they're actually supporting going forward. And hopefully they will add that in and right. bring some of the features of the older ones across to the new API so that we can do that. And that, so I just have to say that little piece right there, it, those things like that, things like that are, are the, are the things that I love to hear about. It's like these small details that you wouldn't think are that big of a deal, but they they mm -hmm. they have a massive kind of a uh, 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 a wave wave effect on everything you do. Is that when Twitch changes their API to, to to the average person that just you know shows up and streams a little and then has their audience and they and they when they're done they uh go home, you know. For those people, they don't care. They just go, "Hey, I as long as as long as I uh, as long as when I hit start streaming, it streams. I don't care how or why." But then there's people like yourself. You're like, "I'm building these tools, and every detail matters, and mm -hmm. every detail." And so, so you get these requests for features that are like, "Yeah, this would be great, but I can't pull it off." And I, it's things like that that really get me going because there's an opportunity there right in front of us like here's what goes on here's the magic behind the uh uh uh, 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 uh screen for you for people who stream here's the magic it's it, this is what people this is what the software i shouldn't say people who don't call it themselves software developers this is what they deal with on a daily basis and so that little story right there i'm gonna pull that little bit that you just told me i'm gonna put it on linkedin i'm gonna share it out like hey mm -hmm. people who don't code listen to this because you need to know this part all right so okay so, so you have clippy you're building on these features whoa, whoa, whoa. so when it comes to like uh, officially launching i guess what the first version of uh 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 uh, 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 uh clippy what would a finished version 1.0 look like I'm pretty much what you see today. Um, so so the, the beta kind of exists in two aspects. Was a sort of just a stopgap to... Obviously, I realized that this was more popular than I expected. Um, and so I didn't... I then had to actually start putting that thinking hat on going, I really don't know how popular this will be when it launches. 
Um, and, you know, there are, at the end of the day, thousands of streamers out there and hundreds of thousands. Um, right. So there is a very real risk that I could, put, if I just put this live on the get-go, I could have ended up with hundreds of signups all at once and things get overloaded and then people get annoyed mm -hmm. um, and it kind of just crashes and burns and stuff like that. So I just wanted to put this sort of stopgap in so I can kind of control the flow of people coming in um, and, you know, because I'm just one person at the end of the day and, you know, I've got to sleep. So, what? and obviously Sleeping? that's something we've what? noticed. <laughs> um, Sleeping? How do you do that? <laughs> It's funny. Uh, 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 sorry about that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Like one thing I noticed is um, I get a lot of requests that are sort of in the evening America time, and obviously that's like 1 a.m. for me, um, <laughs> and I still have a day job I've got to do, so right. and there's only so long I can stay up handling these requests and stuff like that. So, yeah, that was really kind of why the beta existed was to sort of control that, but also allow us to add a few more features in that. So really, what you look at today with Clippy is pretty much, it's Clippy. Clippy is okay. launched. Um, so the, the aim to really take it to the launch now, um, which is pretty much imminent, um, there's a few bugs um, and slight performance improvements I want to put in first. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple of little features, a um, couple of little improvements to existing features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing spectacularly going to change in the next two to three weeks. Really. Oh. Okay, so then that 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 obviously takes us takes us to the next important question of. So so when this launches, you're you're gonna want to want to want to to uh, 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 charge people for this because. You know, at some point you will hit a scale at which, okay, the, you know, the people I have in the beta, I can, I can, I can handle those issues. But at some point you're going to want some, uh, want, want compensation for your time. So, <laughs> so, so, so when it comes to the, uh, comes to, to the monetization uh, of Clippy, uh, what are your plans? Um, still flashing them out at the moment. Um. Now that that's kind of a request we've had in the past already is people just going, you know, how can we support this financially? Right. Um right. and I want to avoid the sort of streamer mindset of just going, here's a donation page, um, or even a recurring donation page like Patreon or right. Buy Me a Coffee or something like that, where you know people can just give you money. Um that's not really A, that's not sustainable mm -hmm. in a scaling product. B, it's not a product. Um, it's just people giving me money. Um, Got it. Which is supporting and helps a lot and would cover things like server costs. And I want to do it in a way that brings benefit to the money you're providing. Okay. So okay. in a simple aspect, there is some yet to be named um, Clippy Plus, Clippy Premium, okay. something like that. Okay. Uh, a higher tier to the baseline. But the, the, the key thing for me is that the baseline of Clippy will always be free. all the features will generally always be free. We might eventually release a specific paid product, mm -hmm. but that whole thing might then be paid. Um, one thing I really hate with free sites um, <laughs> is they cripple the free tier so much that you're basically forced to pay for it because a free tier is so unusable. Right. Um, and that's one thing I just want to flat out avoid with Clippy. So... One of the like, common requests we've had is that's probably going to be a premium feature is we've had the request to be able to customize the design of Clippy when it's on your stream. So, you know, you can integrate with your brand and your graphics, right? that kind of thing, change the colors, change the fonts, change the way it animates in whatever. Right. Um, and that's, so that's one of those features that if you don't have it, Clippy still works and still does exactly what you need it to do mm -hmm. in a really great way. But if you do have it, gives you a little bit more so give us a little bit of money um right, right right and that's kind of the theory um so yeah and i mean we're talking you know 4.99 a month maybe right maybe that will scale depending on you know how what features are like and stuff like that and economics and stuff i haven't even wrapped my head around yet um right but yeah it will just be kind of a tier and it'll be things like you know 
yeah, like that customization feature of, you know, you want a little bit extra, you can have a little bit of extra, but um, give us a little bit of money. Right. So, okay. So is so uh, as far as the beta, beta itself. So as of as of the date of this recording right now, <laughs> how many people do you have in the beta? Um, we're at four hundred and fifty-ish accounts registered on the website, and I think about three hundred and fifty of them are actually people who have followed through and got activated. Okay. And have access to it. So okay, so so basically, so you have three hundred fifty people from that sample size. Uh, are you getting enough uh, feedback from that? Because three hundred and fifty versus like one thousand three hundred fifty. I mean, that's like a huge jump, and that isn't mm-hmm. even. I mean, three hundred fifty eh, eh, from a from a software standpoint. Eh, eh, three hundred fifty from a software. <clears throat> even. Eh, even if you had like one thousand three hundred fifty, I mean, from a from a from an application standpoint at scale, it isn't very big. So, so, mm-hmm. so, so I guess, so for your for your current sample size of three fifty, do you feel like your back when it comes to comes to problems with the bugs and stuff? Um, we we we've got a. So we've got the Clippy Discord, um, and generally most people who get activated and beta have joined it, and we do have a pretty vocal community around it. Um, so some people are definitely a lot more vocal than others, but that's kind of a majority of anything. Um, right. You are right. going to have the 20% that's louder than the 80%. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, right. So but all, the, all the feedback. I, I don't think I've had a single person yet that's been... You know, entitled or you know, okay. disrespectful in any way. Everyone's been incredibly appreciative, um, which wow. is great. Um, you know, because that makes it a lot easier to put the time in. I'm not asking for adoration or anything like that, but right. to have you know just that baseline and people just going, you know, this is an amazing product. You know, loving using it. Um, and like. I, I, I've had some people where they almost feel bad when they're going, oh, yeah, no, sorry, but this didn't work. I'm like, hey, yeah, no, uh, tell me, please. Like, it's the whole point of this. Um, right, right. And like they're almost apologizing for coming in and going, so like Clippy went down for the first time on Sunday, I think it was. Um, okay. And someone was like, almost like implying it was their own fault. It wasn't working. I was like, no, no, like... I just looked, yeah, it's genuinely down. It took like 10 minutes and then going back up again. Um, okay. I was just like, yeah, so, you know, community around it has been phenomenal. And yeah, everyone's been great. And there's been so many feature requests, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. general feedback. Um, even a TikTok or two somewhere, I think, has happened. Wow. Um, which is great because I don't know how to use TikTok. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So, so, okay. for yourself you have a full-time j job you have this side project in the evening that that, that keeps you up too late and 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 you're like at some point you know you have to hit a hit a decision decision point and you're like maybe this turns into more than just a side project so what does a successful clippy app uh look like for you Success is so hard to define with Clippy because it's already gone above and beyond any of my expectations um, at every stage. So, um, you know, you'd asked me a couple of months ago, I'd have probably said, you know, success is hitting 100 people. Right. Well, we've thrown that in the dust and that's behind. Um, mm-hmm. So if I wanted to say ultimate, be all and end all, like what is like ultimate goal on success of Clippy, it would be for it to just be not that exciting anymore. And it's just the kind of thing that okay. if you're a streamer on Twitch, you get Streamlabs or Stream Elements for alerts and you have Clippy for your shout outs. No one is really thinking of it as a big exciting thing anymore. It's kind of just a it's a de facto. Like you're streaming on Twitch and you're not using Clippy? What do you mean? Like, uh, I that, like that. that would be uh, see, and and I, I like that thought process that you have. Is that you want to be so successful that people ask, "Why don't you have this already?" Right? Mm-hmm. 
See, and that, yeah, um, see, now that right there is the, so when you can cross the, I guess, cross the uh, emotional and mental threshold of people to the point where your product becomes an expectation, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that would like, and I, I, I don't know if we'll ever get there. Um, I can certainly hope, but yeah, that would be like the, that's when I would say Clippy has made it. And I'm like, yeah, that now it's just, it's another tool on people's tool belts. Um, yeah, it's just something people grab and have on the stream and it's just, it, it is just now part of the Twitch ecosystem. And I, I've heard a couple of people referring to it and saying like, it's the future of the Twitch meta. And that's other people's words. Um, I would never <laughs> be quite so grandiose about it myself, but um, that that thought and that like possibility that and it is a possibility at the end of the day. Um, yeah, just blows my mind daily basis. Right. So okay. So for for people out there like yourself in different parts of the world who maybe have these interesting ideas and they kind of make their own tools to solve their own problems or they have a plan and they want to create something to make to create something to solve a problem obviously in this process and the process hasn't been very long maybe a few months maybe you know maybe six to eight i don't, I don't know so you, you, you've obviously learned a lot of lessons along the way we, we spoke about those earlier so so for people out there who who want to who want to glean from your experience? What are some things that you've uh, learned along the way? So one of the big lessons I've learned from Clippy, and it's kind of one of those cliches you hear from entrepreneurs and business gurus, and it's just do it, just get it done. Um, and um, and that that's really been a big problem for me. I, get, I, I tend to get bogged down in some of the details that just don't matter. Um, mm -hmm. Particularly with like side projects, when I'm building a tool, I will end up spending far too much time researching what the right, you know, application for this part of it is. Or um, and so, like one of the things I had with Clippy is I realized at one point I need a database on the back end, and I have never touched databases in the past purely because I couldn't be bothered to learn how to deal with databases. So I always found a way around it where I didn't need one. And this was the first time where I was like, no, I need a database. And I found myself spending three, four hours one afternoon comparing like three different like best practice databases. Then I was just saying, I got to a point where I was like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one I use. It doesn't matter whether one's slightly better at it. I just need to store some data right pick one and use it right and so i did right and it doesn't change your experience of using the product it doesn't matter to you what i'm doing on the mac end and so that really is probably my biggest learning is just pick a tool and always change it later on um and it, you might make a mistake and that's fine um and you might pick the wrong tool and then you know a couple months down the line you're like Oh, that doesn't scale very well. Um, oops, and you figure it out and you you move on. Um, right. You know, and I, I I've made some of those mistakes. You know, I've I've got certain processes for getting people activated and stuff like that. Now that I'm like, kind of wish I'd automated this or build a better way to do this in the past. Right. And I'm also like, the time I would spend building that. And making a nice little pretty admin dashboard for me, I could be spending that time building actual features for people. Um, right. So yeah, that's my two sort of main takeaways: is just just get stuck in, start doing it. Um, don't get bogged down with details that don't matter. Don't get bogged down with a thought like maybe you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. If you can you'll find a way? Um, and then also just make, make sure you're throwing your time in the right place. Um, you know, measuring that sort of impact to time ratio and, you know, how much value am I going to get out of the time I put in? Very nice. So, okay. So I, 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 I guess the next question would be, so we're going to hire, hire maybe 
they can do some of these other little side things while you have a, a, a solo project for a while. Yeah, I would 100% love to <laughs> hire people. Because um, there's, there's so much about this that I just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm you know running their Twitter account for Clippy. I'm not a social media expert in any aspect. So, you know, sitting there and thinking of tweets and building a brand for Clippy, mm -hmm. um, which has happened quite organically, and it kind of just was one of the... For the sort of first things I wanted to make sure was I wanted Clippy to be separate from me. Never wanted it to be okay. Dom Noiner's tool. I wanted it to be the Clippy tool. I'm just a guy to me. Got um, it. Okay. So I I tried, and which is why I refer to Clippy a lot as we. Um, right. Because Clippy is the collective, even though the collective is still just me. Right. Um, and I, I that, that comes across a lot of times and people are like, you know, shout out to the Clippy team and I'm like, thanks. Um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so uh yeah, some of that stuff I would love you know, I would love to have someone that's, you know, knows what they're doing with social media and knows how to build right. social media pages and build communities, you know, community managers, social media managers, those kind of things. Obviously I don't have the money and I I'm not the kind of person who wants to just go, hey, do this for free. Right. Um, right. But I, I am also very fortunate in that I've got really good friends. So I have um, friends who are hanging around in the Clippy Discord, and they're either using it themselves or they're just there, um, and they're doing a phenomenal job of almost playing tech support sometimes. Um, wow. I could never ask that because I could never pay anyone any meaningful sum to do that. Right. But I do have people that are willing to sort of take it upon themselves to spend that bit of time answering people's questions, which again comes in real handy when I'm asleep. Yes, yes, it does. So, so Dom, I do have to say that last little bit right there where you're talking about the collective and you don't want Clippy to be about you. You want it to be about the product i i have tried to impress upon people that when you make something when you create an app or you write a story or you create graphics and you put it out put it out there in front of people it no longer becomes yours it becomes everybody else's and you are <laughs> and you are just like the steward of that product that that story that you know that uh video whatever and <clears throat> and i like your thought process there is it is it is that I made a thing, but I don't want to be the thing. I want this. Mm -hmm. I is it the fact you want Clippy to stand on its own to be? I mean, yes, you are the founder. You're the creator. You're the guy. But at some point, you realize this, and probably because of your own life experiences, you realize that at some point this will become larger than you and become more than you as a person. It will become its own creation, and and will be will be curated and cultivated by other people. And that's yeah. a, and that's a kind of a third level thinking process that a lot of people don't understand is that is that while I've created this, I don't own it. Everybody else that uses it actually owns it and I answer to them. So Dom, you are you, you I I really love your thought process right there. I, and I'm grateful that you made time for me all the way across the ocean in, in Germany. You're an awesome person. So it's okay. So just as, as, as a quick wrap up journalization, if people want to find your site, it is, it is clippy dot TV and it at clippy TV on, uh, on Twitter, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what else is right. Yeah. Absolutely. So you see that on the screen right there on the overlay. Clippy.tv is the website. At Clippy TV is the Twitter. Dom, you're a fantastic human being for coming on my show. I thank you very, very much. Um, it, going forward now, I'm sure you have like these massive plans to plans to uh, to uh, take over the the uh, world, right? Mm -hmm, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing as you do every night. Gonna go to Pinky and Brain method and just take over the world. That's the that's the plan, basically. <laughs> the 
god, did um, you? And, the, oh my god, the fact that you knew what I was talking about right there just makes me appreciate you as a human and we're cheap, right? What are we gonna do tonight? The same thing mm. we do every night, Pinky. <laughs> Take over the world. Easy. <laughs> Tom, you're a kick in the pants, my friend. Thanks for making time for me today. I it's appreciate it. It's been a you pleasure. Today. Thanks for having me. Alright, everybody, please do like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel. All the all the information you need will be in the description below. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see, see you very soon. Thank you for tuning in today. You can find links to everyone on the show in the description below. Check out Bill the Conqueror on Twitch and Twitter to stay up to date on his thoughts and ideas about gaming culture.